Good evening and welcome to the Marathon Classic Teeing Off Special live from Highland Meadows. I'm Dan Cummins. The tournament back once again. It's another sign that we are returning to normal following the COVID pandemic. Fans were expected to fill the course up here to watch some of the best golfers in the world compete. It's always fun coming out here every year. I've been coming back here since 1984 and you know today they have the Pro-Am which is just vital to earn money to raise money for the charities that benefit 29 children's charities this year. The first round kicks off tomorrow as long as the weather cooperates and Chief Meteorologist Chris Vickers joins us now. So Chris that's the big question, man. What's the weather looking like for tomorrow's first round? You know, you, Dan, you probably have seen a few storms. I know there were some disruptions to play earlier today for the Pro-Am. Is that right? Yeah, we had a, a stop from like 215 to about 415, 430. Yeah, understand. And tomorrow, of course, big days. We look to actually get things started for the big tournament, and I do expect it's going to be an unsettled day once again. Dan, we've got some information to get through with a few active storms this evening as storms clear out of the Toledo Metro. Still have an active severe thunderstorm warning. This for another 15 minutes across most of Williams County, parts of Fulton County, northern Defiance County, where some pretty good torrential downfalls. And look at those, some fresh lightning strikes just south of West Unity. That is just east of Stryker, outside of Bryan, where the thunder and lightning is still quite quite vivid. This severe thunderstorm warning will include the threat of some winds up to about 60 miles per hour, torrential rainfall, and of course some frequent thunder and lightning. Heads up, it's already coming down in Archbold as now we've crossed 530, and I do expect that the rain is just going to be begin to pick up and it will get heavier. Ridgeville Corners right around 543 and over toward Wauseon, you're still closer to about 10 minutes away from the top of the hour. One of the stronger parts of this storm is just outside of Farmer. That's just south of Route 6 in Williams County. And I sliced through this storm just to indicate that this is likely producing not only torrential rain and downpours. This gives us almost like an X-ray through the storm, showing it could be producing some gusty winds as well across northern parts of Defiance County. So we do have some storms that are occurring this evening. One storm in particular that's under a severe thunderstorm warning. Our opening day forecast for opening round tomorrow right around 80 degrees. Now storms are going to be likely still going to be humid with a likely chance of storms perhaps even in the morning and another round midday through the afternoon could have some disruptions to play as we look forward to the opening round tomorrow. Better weather ahead though, Friday in the much of Saturday. Dan will preview that in my 10 day forecast because I do believe we're going to have some very nice weather for Friday to be expected. Chris, that is great news. Thank you so much. Well, last year's winner of the Marathon Classic was Danielle King Kang, and she's back in town looking to defend her crown. You might recall last year, she won the drive on championship at Inverness and then the next week she won here at Highland Meadows. She mounted a comeback against previous champion Lydia Ko last year and ended up winning on the final hole. She's excited to be back in Northwest Ohio after seeing so much success last year. I played awesome at Inverness and um, this tournament I played well, but I also did make a lot of mistakes and but ended up, you know, winning by one and uh, came, came down to the last stretch. But the last nine holes I played lights out and just kept giving myself chances. And I like the, you know, match play mentality that I went into with five down, six to play. Kind of that's how, how, how Ollie kind of phrased it and kind of kicked me into gear. After fans not being allowed to attend last year, you may be wondering what ticket prices are for this year's tournament. If you plan to be out there all four days, you'll want to get a weekly grounds pass. That's about 60 bucks. Otherwise, single day tickets are $15 for Thursday and Friday and $20 for Saturday and Sunday. Parking, by the way, $10 a day or $20 for the entire week. Kids 17 and under are free. And if you are retired or active duty military, fire, police, EMS, a frontline health care worker or first responder, you and a guest can get out here to the tournament for free. Now, the tournament's been held here at Highland Meadows every year since 1984. Well, 88. Before that, it was held at Glengarry Country Club. Then they moved it out when Glengarry was flipping to Stone Oak. Over that time, the tournament's helped nearly 200 local charities with funding. The Ronald McDonald House of Northwest Ohio and the Toledo Community Foundation are core recipients each year. But each year, the tournament accepts applications from different charities to receive some of the money raised over the weekend. In all, the tournament has raised $12 million for 190 different Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan children's charities. 
Not only is this an exciting time for golf lovers and community members, this tournament brings money and foot traffic to downtown. Let's check in with Kaylee Kirby, who is live in downtown Sylvania. Kaylee, it's great for the area, especially after last year's tournament. No spectators at all. Yeah, exactly, Dan. Marathon Classic usually brings in millions of dollars to the area, so being able to have fans back walking the streets is great for business. Officials at the Sylvania Area Chamber of Commerce say the tournament is really a group effort, though, from the Marathon Classic team to the business owners and Sylvania residents. All of them work to make this week fun and enjoyable, and it pays off. Year after year, the Sylvania economy always sees an increase during the tournament because spectators also want to shop the area and grab food. We definitely see an uptick. Our businesses embrace that the players and their families are coming to town, all the spectators that drive in and fly in. It's just a nice way to showcase Sylvania and our businesses really embrace it. Scott says they are always excited and thankful to continue to be able to have Marathon Classic here in Sylvania. She believes it's because of the hometown feel and everyone welcomes the golfers. Now coming up in just a few minutes, you'll hear from two area businesses on why the Marathon Classic is so good for them and what it means for their shop. Reporting live in downtown Sylvania, Kaylee Kirby, WTOL 11. Kaylee, thank you so much. Toledo-born Stacey Lewis, always a fan favorite and one of the most popular players out here on the tour. This is always one of her favorite stops, and she has a ton of family in the area. These next few weeks will be extremely crucial for her. She was a major part of the group that tried to get the Solheim Cup to her hometown of Toledo. Now she's hoping to be part of the USA team when they come back here in late August. Right now, she wouldn't qualify with points, but she has a great chance to be one of Pat Hurst's captain's picks. These next few weeks are so important to have her game trending in the right way, so she'll be part of that special event. It would be unbelievable. Um, it would be, it would be everything. I mean, to be born here, this was my first LPGA event, was here in Ohio. My parents are from here. I mean, it would, it would mean everything to play in this tournament. I mean, it. Um, I don't know. I mean, so I love so hand cups. I love, you know, it's so special, but it would be probably be one of the highlights of my career. Yeah, we'll be rooting for Stacy this week. And of course, that'd be a logical pick, right? To have her as a captain's pick. Marathon Classic, one of the longest running tournaments on the LPGA Tour. It started back in 1984. It's been going ever since. I spoke with tournament director Judd Silverman earlier today about how it's been able to happen and what it means to be able to have fans in attendance again this year. Could you ever thought back in 1984 that, that this would be like one of the longest running tournaments on the LPGA Tour, and it's one of the most popular events in there. It's just remarkable, uh, the, the humble beginnings and where we are now. Oh, that's, um, you know, there's so many companies, so many people. It is a community event, and everybody's got a piece of this event. And when everybody pulls the oars together, <laughs> you last 37 years, you know, and you raise $13 million for charity. So um, what can I say? It's all about generous sponsors, volunteers that give up of their time, great media coverage. And that's, uh, that's a, really, that's the success that we uh, have been so fortunate to have through the years because everybody's contributing. Judd, last year, I can't imagine what you guys went through in, in trying to put the tournament, are, are you going to have a tournament or are you not going to have a tournament? Are fans going to be there? Will they not be there? But you still pulled it off. You, you, the, the calendar for 2020 will just have no asterisk. The golf was played. No doubt, Dan. Uh, we were so fortunate to, uh, to get it in. Uh, the LPGA commissioner, Mike Wan, helped us get there. And then our sponsors. Um, and then we couldn't fulfill about 50 sponsorships because without fans, you know, if you bought a ticket package or you bought hospitality, you know, we couldn't, or you're playing in a pro-am. So we called those sponsors and said, hey, uh, would you like a full refund? Or would you consider donating money to the charities? Every one of them donated the money to the charities. And we raised $600,000 for charity uh, in a year where, I mean, three months before the tournament, I didn't even think we we're gonna have the tournament. So charity won, the LPGA players got a chance to make a living after having about five months off. So it was really a feel-good story, and uh, but this year, so great to see people out here. It's just uh, what a relief and what a celebration, and thank you Toledo and Northwest Ohio for everything you do for us. 
Well, some rain and storms in the area this evening, but what about for the weekend? Chief Meteorologist Chris Vickers is back next to break down what we could expect.